We are live. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. Um, I'm going to just start. Uh, welcome to this uh, session on the seven most common modifier mistakes uh, students make while solving the GMAT SE questions. And today we are going to discuss how to number one spot these mistakes and then how to avoid them. All right. So uh, before I begin talking about myself, I would love to hear uh, from you guys, all of you, a bit about uh, who you are and where you are from and uh, whether you've given the GMAT and if you have, what scores you have come up with and what are your problems you're facing uh, in your preparation if you are facing any problems. So I would love to hear about you. And um, in the meantime, let me also continue telling you guys about myself. So I am Sunita. And I'll be your host for the evening. I have uh, I'm the verbal head with GMAT Wiz, and I have trained over you can say thirty thousand students in the last decade or so. Uh, teaching is my passion, and uh, when it comes to verbal, it's been something you know a, a, a bit of it is there, which is there, which has been there ingrained right from the beginning. And then I've uh, developed, and you know, uh, during the entire research that I carried out. Uh, when uh, you know looking after GMAT students and all, and then then I got to know about all the students' problems. So um, this is something that I love to do. So uh, you know, listening to students, sorting their problems, helping them out sort their problems. Um, if you go through the GMAT Wiz course, uh, a lot of it is uh, a lot of dedicated hard work from uh, my side in terms of developing the course material, the course questions, and so on. So uh, that was all about me. And uh, let me see if, OK, so hello, Nikhil. Uh, hello, Mihir. Hello, Rajesh. Hello, uh, TN Krishnan. Uh, great, let me see. So uh, Rajesh is from Tirupati. And uh, Rajesh is saying we need to know how prepositional phrases modify nouns. Definitely, Rajesh, I'm going to talk about that today in detail. Hi, Mohin. Um, that's it's very nice to uh, hear from all of you. Uh, Nikhil, yes, uh, the recording will be available to you afterwards and you will be able to go through that. But uh, definitely, I would love to have you on the on the session live and talking to me. Um, let's see who else we have. Hi, Mohin, where are you from? And uh, I, I can see this that you guys are raring to go. OK, so let me get on uh, with the session without more ado, uh, but a very quick uh, intro about GMAT Wiz to those of you who don't know about it. Uh, GMAT Wiz is the world's only truly personalized course. And when I say only truly personalized course, it really means exactly that. You know, uh, we realized that we, uh, when we were coming up with this GMAT Wiz platform, we realized that we wanted to create a course um, uh, which would be uh, let's put it this way, which would adapt to the needs of the student as and when and how the student pr progress with the course instead of the course being a static thing, you know, we wanted it to kind of uh, move according to the student's progress. Uh, and that is how we came up with this course. So it is one of the unique uh, kinds of its course. It's the it's uh, you can say it's an adaptive course where we have used AI intervention to make it adaptive and personalized. Uh, now, what the, the thing that is very special about our course is uh, three things, actually. We provide you with a very personalized study plan. When I say personalized study plan, what do I mean by that? I mean, I'm talking about a study plan, which is going to be customized according to uh, the time available at your end, uh, the level at, at, at which you are, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say, uh, time availability you have and when you are going to be able to put in that time. So all of those things will be taken into account. Uh, what are your target scores and what are your current scores and stuff like that. And we are going to prepare a customized plan for you. Uh, this plan is really going, so this plan is going to be something that is going to adapt as you proceed, as I said earlier also. It's not going to be a static plan. Depending on your progress, your performance, uh, it will adapt or change. You will also be provided the real-time improvement modules. So here, what I mean is that um, you know, uh, 
how if you're weak in a particular area you know, the the uh, the platform is going to point that out to you it's going to redirect you towards the part which you need to the concepts that you need to go over again and accordingly you will be guided towards improving on your weak areas and you will also be pointed out we will also point out to you about the area i mean the point the reasons why you are weak in those areas all right Finally, um, one of the most uh, unique things okay, about us is also that if you purchase the entire course from us, we also assign dedicated mentors to you. Mentors who themselves have uh, taken the GMAT, uh, who have scored about 740, 760, and so on. And they will be, able, they will be there uh, in your entire journey of preparing for GMAT, you know, uh, monitoring your performance, putting in inputs, guiding you. Um, gently and sometimes a little forcefully if required so um that is there now the uh, this is one of the most effective courses that you will have come across and uh testament to that is the average score improvement if you um if you look at this data which is a slightly uh slightly old data because the latest according to the latest data our student uh, our students have achieved a maximum of 130 points improvement and this is something which is uh, as you can see it is one of the things that we can boast of uh, is uh, unique among all our competitors so that's all about gmat ways and let me begin with the um, you know the main portion of this uh, so how many of you all are really excited guys hi himadri you are from gurgaon welcome hi mihir so Mihir has uh, Mihir can't comprehend complicated sentences with ease. Mihir, today uh, today's session is then uh, I I should say a godsend for you because I'm also going to talk about how to read the sentences so that you can understand the complicated sentences. Hi Sam, how are you? Um, so Sam, this recording will be available I guess in a couple of days, uh, probably uh, not more than that. All right. Um, so let's get going. Uh, now, just uh, before I proceed into the actual, uh, you know, those seven mistakes, I'm just going to give a quick run up about the modifiers. Okay, so just bear with me. Uh, some of you might uh, be knowing this stuff already. Um, so, and you might find that this is a little, you know, repetitive, which is okay. But this is just to warm up all, the, all those of you who have just begun your preparation and kind of still don't know completely about modifiers. So. I'm going to give a brief introduction about the modifiers. Very, very brief, just maybe about two to three minutes before we delve deep into those modifier errors. So just stay with me. Uh, when we talk about modifiers, what are they? They are basically providing additional information about the other entities in the sentence. And if you look at the skeletal entities, they are basically the subject and the verb. So these modifiers provide us information either about the subject or the verb. Okay. And the entity that they describe is known as the modified entity. So we'll be referring uh, to that modified entity a lot. And modifiers can be either a single word modifying the entity, a phrase modifying the entity, or a complete clause that is modifying the entity. You know, um, for example, you have the relative pronoun clauses which modify the noun. Modifiers, when we say types of modifiers, there are broadly three kinds. Modifiers which modify only nouns, guys, okay? Only nouns. These modifiers do not modify verbs. Then you have modifiers which modify verbs but do not touch the nouns. They're not supposed to touch the nouns. And then, uh, you know, you have the confu confusing modifiers where the modifier can modify a noun and a verb, okay? So when we are talking about noun modifiers, that means modifiers that can only modify nouns and not verbs. What are these noun modifiers? What types are they? Okay, so a while back Rajesh was saying that we want he wants to understand about prep, prepositional phrases. So we're gonna go to uh, come to that Rajesh. Just hold on uh, to your horses till then. Um, so uh, you have the ed verbals. Okay, what are ed verbals? Words that end in ed. Uh, they sometimes also end in en or simply n or nt. You know. These words uh, resemble verbs. They look like verbs, but they are actually not verbs. They are modifying the noun. <coughs> okay. So, for example, if you look at this sentence, the car abandoned near the church was sent to the scrap recycling plant. Your abandoned 
is not the verb performed by the car. It is talking about or just giving additional information about uh, the car. This car is the one which is abandoned near the church. So this is an ED verbal. In our course, we will also teach you how to recognize that it's an ED verbal and not a verb. Okay, but that's a discussion for some other session, not right now. So rest assured, uh, definitely we will give you pointers about how to identify that it's an ED verbal. So an ED verbal is always going to modify the noun, not the verb. Okay. Um, then you have the relative pronoun clauses. Now, since it's a pronoun clause, it has to refer only to a noun. All right. Say, for example, um, the same sentence that is given above, we can also state as the car that was abandoned near the church. So that was abandoned near the church is a relative pronoun clause, starting with the relative pronoun that and defining car. Then you have the noun phrases. The noun phrases, uh, an example is uh, the sentence, soft paraffin. And then a comma, and then you have a noun phrase beginning with an article and ending with a noun refining. Okay, so a byproduct of petroleum refining is basically uh, giving you more information about soft paraffin. So you have these noun phrases mod that only modify the noun. And then, of course, you have the one word modifiers. You know, very simple example would be uh, Marie lives in the blue house across the street, where blue is modifying the noun house. So that's all about the modifiers that can modify only nouns okay only nouns so the unique thing about noun modifiers is that they should be placed as close as possible to the noun entity they are modifying okay and this is something that is going to come very handy today so just remember if you have a modifier placed close to a noun one of the things that you have to check for is whether that entity is logically modifying that nearest noun or not all right quickly the verb modifiers, not much here. You know, these are modifiers that give you information only about the verbs and not about the nouns. So you have uh, these modifiers telling you, you know, information like why the verb took place and when the verb took place and where the verb took place, how it took place, uh, what was the manner in which it uh, took place and so on and so forth. So you have the two verbals. Two verbals are two plus the verb form, you know, for example, Marie opened the window to look at the moon in the sky. So here the verb is opened. Okay, Marie opened. And why did she open the window? She opened it to look. So to look is telling you the purpose or the intention behind the verb opened. So two verbs modify the verbs. And then you have one word adverbs. Okay, uh, Marie opened the window quickly. So what was the manner in which she opened the window? So these are the ver uh, verbals which uh, modify only the verbs and not the nouns. These modifiers can be placed slightly away from the verb they modify. In, in fact, a verb modifier need not be placed close to the verb it modifies, unlike the noun modifiers. Finally, we have what we call the common modifiers. That is, modifiers that can modify either a noun or a verb. You have the prepositional phrases. So I hope you're listening to this, Rajesh. Prepositional phrases are phrases which start with a preposition. Okay. Let's look at an example. Increase in the price of necessary goods. Here in the price of necessary goods is basically a prepositional phrase. It is placed next to the noun, the increase. And it is modifying this noun, the increase. So we already know that a noun modifier must modify the nearest noun it must be placed as close as possible to the noun it modifies so this prepositional phrase is placed next to increase and it is modifying increase okay now if you look at this sentence in order to resolve the debate so here we have a prepositional phrase beginning with in again however in this case this phrase in order to resolve the debate is modifying the verb wrapped it says the teacher rapped loudly on the table. Why did she rap loudly on the table? In order to resolve the debate. As you can see, the verb modifier is placed slightly away from the verb it. It is supposed to modify. Okay, so prepositional phrases uh, modify both a noun and a verb. If it is modifying the noun, it is placed close to the noun. If it is modifying a verb, it can be placed a little far away from the verb. Now, these are very basic things, but I want all of us to be on the same page today before we delve deep into those seven uh, modifier errors. 
uh, flexible modifiers, I'm going to talk more about it uh, later in the course. So right now, just let me mention that flexible modifiers are modifiers that can modify either the noun or the verb. Okay, and the unique bit about flexible modifiers is that it can be placed far away from the entities they modify, even if it is a noun. Okay, say for example, look at this sentence. Harry has graduated from Cambridge University with distinction in economics. And then there's a comma. So here we have a clause, Harry being the subject, has graduated being the verb, and graduated from Cambridge University with distinction in economics. And after the comma, you have uh, um, a clause, an institution that is considered to be one of the best in the world. Now, this clause, an institution, noun plus the clause that is modifying the noun institution is referring to, you can see, Cambridge University. And it is modifying Cambridge University from afar. All right. So this is a flexible modifier here. An institution that is considered to be one of the best in the world is a flexible modifier, modifying the noun Cambridge University. We'll talk more about it. So for now, just hold on to that thought. Continuing with common modifiers, you have the ing verbals. OK, now we've already understood that ed verbals modify only the nouns. On the other hand, the ing verbals, that is words ending with ing, can modify both a noun and a verb. OK, they are the ing form of the verb. And they are not preceded by any helping verb. That is how they are verbals, that is modifiers, but not verbs. Um, they can be single words, phrases, or they can modify both either nouns or verbs. For example, let's look at the sentence. The dancing birds entertain the crowd watching the show. Now, if you see here, the ing verbal dancing is modifying birds, and the ing verbal watching is modifying the crowd. Okay. Similarly, the governor rejected. So the governor is the subject, and rejected here is the verb. It's the action performed by the governor. What did the governor reject? The mercy plea of the murder convict. Then you have a comma, and then you have the ing verbal signaling. So the governor rejected the mercy plea, and uh, the outcome of rejecting this mercy plea was the governor was signaling authorities to take stern action against such heinous crime. So what was the manner in which the mercy plea was rejected? What was the outcome of the rejection of the mercy plea? The governor was signaling authorities to take stern action. Now, the unique thing that you'll notice about this comma plus ing verbal is it also makes sense with the subject governor. So governor rejected the mercy plea and governor signaling, signaling authorities to take stern action. OK, so here we have the ing verbals that can modify both nouns and verbs. So to be noted here, guys, if the ing verbal modifies a verb, it is preceded by a comma from uh, separating that ing verbal from the clause. OK, on the OK. So that, this is something that you'll have to remember. The comma plus ing verbal means it's modifying the nearest verb. But if there is no comma separating the noun and the ing verbal, it means it is modifying the noun. As you can see here, this is modifying the noun. This is modifying the noun. However, here you have the comma and plus the ing verbal. And you know that it is modifying the OK, guys, so that was a quick run up about modifiers. And now that we are going to delve deep into the seven most commonly uh, committed errors or mistakes on modifier questions. Now, there's a small request, guys. So let me just pop in to see uh, what questions we have here. Uh, let's see. Hi, Sam. Hi, Ruchita. Um, Okay, Ruchita is saying, thank you for holding this session. Welcome, Ruchita. Uh, my pleasure. Hi, Pranav. Um, hi, Jason. Okay. So Jason has a question. Uh, by applying optimized surgery methods, the doctor cured the patient. Why is the comma preposition phrase modifying the doctor? Uh, it is modifying the doctor, first of all. It's placed right next to the doctor. All right. And we know here that it is the doctor who can apply the optimized surgery methods, nobody else. Okay, The patient cannot do it logically. So here, by applying optimized surgery, is modifying the doctor. OK, hi, Santiago. All right, uh, now let me, uh, there's a small request, guys, I would like to make here. So I'm going to put up a question first. I'm going to ask you guys to solve it. 
and then we are going to discuss the uh, the error there that was there and that we should avoid while you solve it and you derive the answers just hold on to your answers okay don't post your answers right away post them only when i asked you to post them all right so just solve the question and keep the answer ready the moment i ask you to post it you can post it on the chat all right so all ready to go uh okay krishnan has a question here uh, is the comma plus ing modifying governor or rejected? It is modifying. So, Krishnan, very clearly, the comma plus ing is modifying rejected. Okay. It is definitely modifying rejected. It is telling us how the reje rejection was carried out. Okay. What happened post the rejection? What was the outcome of the rejection? But since the governor is the subject of the rejected, automatically signaling should make sense with the governor. But be very clear about it. Rejected is the verb which is being modified by the comma plus ing. Okay. So, guys, ready to go? Shall I bring up the question and just hold on to your answers while uh, you, uh, you solve it? And the moment I ask you to put the answers, you will do that. So, let me quickly bring up the question. We are going to deep dive into the ED verbal dilemma. You know, often you come across this ED verb and you are hard put to understand what it is modifying, what it should modify. So we are going to talk about both the things, what it looks like it's modifying and what it should modify. Here's the first question, guys. Go ahead. I'm going to give you two minutes to solve this question. And uh, as I said earlier, do not post the answer straight away. Just hold on to your answers, okay? I'm going to mute myself uh, while you solve this. You have about half a minute more before I tell you to put in your uh, scores, I mean, your answers for now. Just so, Santiago had a question here Wouldn't the an institution modifier generate confusion? Well, an institution would not refer to economics, would it, Santiago? All right. Logically, we have to go by the meaning of the words as well. All right, guys. So you can put in your answers now. Let me see what, what are the answers that you have come up with. And then once I look at the answers, I'm going to move on to the discussion of this question. So, yes. 
and while i'm discussing the question i would like you guys to hold on to your questions okay i'll answer your questions once i have finished discuss, uh, discussing the uh, discussing the question all right highly uh, likely that your answers would get solved by then resolved by then all right so uh, jason says a bishwadeep says b devang says e dipanshu says a mehir says b krishnan says b okay all right so it's mostly but b e b a b e b e b santiago says b bhavesh e vibhav e atit e so it's like it looks like omkar b uh s e e sunil b shavon b it seems it's a it's a fight between b and e guys mostly and i have a sprinkling of a here and there so i want to start discussing and i want you guys to pay really very close attention hold on to your questions once i'm done with the discussion you can put in your questions okay i'll give you that time so let's quickly get about this so that we can solve more and more questions all right now this is the approach that we teach you at gmat ways what we call you know the uh, meaning based approach okay this is how we we'll teach you to break the sentences and read them to get the complicated meanings all right Parakramas are unusual forms of cancer. So we break here and we understand. Okay, we're talking about uh, something called teratomas. These are strange kinds of cancer. All right. Because, all right. So I have a uh, because here. Probably going to tell me why they are unusual forms of cancer. Because they, all right. So who does this they refer to? Okay, likely refers to teratomas. Makes sense because these teratomas are composed of tissues. Okay, I mean, so teratomas are unusual forms of cancer because they are composed of tissues such as tooth and bone. All right. So this such as tooth and bone. This phrase is telling me or giving me examples of certain these tissues uh, which make up teratomas. All right. not normally found now not normally found here found if i look at the word found it looks like a verb and i ask myself okay what found do i have a subject for this found no nothing found anything so found clearly here is an ed verbal okay and this ed verbal is placed next to tooth and bone all right this noun phrase tooth and bone so what we are really saying here per the sentence is that uh, tissues such as tooth and bone are not normally found in the organ in which the tumor appears now this is a little weird it's illogical right i mean would you expect to find tooth and bone in organs you wouldn't okay probably what we wanted to say was the tissues which make up the teratomas this these tissues are probably not normally found in the organ in which the tumor appears such kinds of tissues are not found so it's not that the tooth and bone are not found okay that's where the error is all right so teratomas are unusual forms of cancer this is the intended meaning i'm deriving after reading it in this uh, manner by breaking the sentence and i am also thinking that the reason they are unusual is they are composed of tissues such as tooth and bone and these tissues are not uh, normally found in the organ in which the tumor appears this is what i want to look for so this not normally found is an ed verbal and it is placed next to the nouns tooth and bone so they will modify the nouns tooth and bone and ed verbal guys okay this is to be remembered and i'm going to kind of round it up at the end also ed verbal okay the ed verbal always modifies either the nearest noun or the nearest noun phrase remember this guys either the nearest noun so this ed verbal here could be referring to bone uh, but here since we have an and so it should refer to tooth and bone or it could be referring to a noun phrase which was lying nearest to it okay this is irrespective of whether there is a comma or not even if i had a comma between tooth and bone and then i had not normally found not normally found would still modify the nearest noun so this is your take away here guys about ed verbals and that's what you've got to look out for okay so with that uh, let me move to 
eliminating the answer choices. So in A, A is not correct because the, uh, you know, the not normally found here is incorrectly modifying tooth and bone, this portion. So that is illogical. B, because, okay, they are composed of tissues. So we are seeing teratomas are unusual forms of cancer because they're composed of tissues, okay, such as tooth and bone, fine, that are. Now here, really not much has been changed, okay? That are is that here is a relative pronoun clause, okay? And it is clearly, again, modifying the nearest nouns, tooth and bone, okay? Um, and uh, or there might be actually an ambiguity. I mean, it, it could refer to both tissues and it could refer to tooth and bone, but that ambiguity is not allowed in GMAT, okay? This is ambiguous here, guys. So not allowed. Forgive the handwriting a bit here. So understand that a lot of you marked B, okay? Understand what's wrong with B. It's incorrect because the relative pronoun clause that could logically refer to tooth and bone, okay? They are also nouns and it could also refer to tissues, okay? Which is slightly far away, but that's still okay. The context doesn't tell me whether it is the tissues that are not normally found or the tooth and bone that are not normally found. And this ambiguity is the reason why B has to be eliminated. A relative pronoun clause must very clearly indicate which noun it is modifying, okay? So we teach you this in our course that the modified entity uh, and the modifier pair must be very clear, very logical. No ambiguity is allowed, all right, guys? So just hold on to any questions if you have about B. I'm going to give you a chance to ask those questions. C, because they are composed of tissues. Okay, so far I'm okay with this. Like tooth and bone. Okay. And then I'm saying, now one would wonder that this like tooth and bone, uh, uh, you know, we don't use like tooth and bone in 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 case of uh, giving examples but i could quote you lots of questions og questions where they have used like instead of such as okay so ideally i would like it to be such as all right uh, but i think it was supposed to be such as in the original sentence so let me see all right otherwise now these tissues are not normally found all right so tissues not normally found now this clears the ambiguity right about what is not found. It clears the ambiguity because these teratomas are composed of tissues such as, okay, over here, I would really like this to be such as, but then again, this is to be taken with a pinch of salt. And then we are saying tissues not normally found in the organ in which appears. So C looks good for the time being. I'm gonna keep C. Let me look at D. In that, now let's understand what this phrase in that means, guys, okay? In that means for the reason that you can file this away because I've seen this being used quite a number of times in GMAT questions or in short it means because okay so let's see teratomas are unusual forms of cancer in that that is because their composition now we're talking about composition of teratomas okay their composition is not found. Their composition is not normally found in the organ in which the tumor appears. Now, this is a totally different thing altogether. This is not per the intended meaning, apart from the fact that tissues such as tooth and bone is like glaring out awkwardly there. What is it doing? Is it an example of composition? What is it? So I don't know what is it. Now, D is definitely out. Nobody marked D, so I'm not going to dwell on that much. E was a very favorite contender. In that, they are composed of tissues such as tooth and bone. Okay, so here I've got my such as tooth and bone and I've got my tissues and this is even rectifying the air, you know. So I can kind of go back and eliminate my C uh, because there was this like here, okay. Although that, as I said earlier, is to be taken with a pinch of salt to be seen as a last resort, okay. So in that here means for the reason that these teratomas are composed of tissues such as tooth and bone, and it is the tissues, such tissues are not normally found in the organ. So T, uh, E is the correct answer choice. All right, so guys, your questions, any if you have. 
Okay, Ruchita is um, asking a question here. How to choose between because and in that? Ruchika, uh, Ruchita, you don't have, you won't be called up to differentiate between because and in that only because they both imply the same thing. There's no difference between them. Okay, it's a phrasal adverb in that. Okay, and because is a single word adverb. Both modify verbs. All right. So, uh, Mihir, uh, is that a question? Because I'm not very sure what you're asking. If you could just repeat your question, Mihir. What is in that modifying? So, in that is modifying the verb, all right? They are unusual forms of cancer. Why are they unusual? Are unusual. So, are is my verb and in that is modifying that verb, all right? Because or in that is, an, is a verb modifier. It always modifies the verb. All right. I uh, hope that answers your question, Jason. Um, so, Rajesh, that modify the entire clause. I'm not sure which choice you're talking about, Rajesh, but I'm assuming you're talking about choice B. That is a relative pronoun clause. It only modifies the nearest noun or nouns. Okay, Rajesh? Um, so, is that a prepositional phrase? Uh, Jason is asking. No, Jason. Uh, a prepositional phrase is a phrase which starts with preposition. Okay. In that is not, uh, it is a prepositional phrase and it is modifying the verb. I think, I'm sorry, I got that you were asking about that. So, Jason, in that is a prepositional phrase. It is modifying the verb here. Okay. Uh, I think Dipanshu is asking, tooth and bone are types of tissues. Uh, why can't the intended meaning be that? Well, such as tooth and bone, the phrase is only talking about examples. So you're literally saying that tooth and bone are not normally found in the organ. And moreover, Dipanshu, remember, GMAT likes clarity. In fact, it insists on clarity in its sentences. So you choose a sentence which is very clearly telling you that it is the, uh, the tissues such as tooth and bone which are not found in the organ. Okay. Um, all right, so Jason says he rejected E because he couldn't find what that standard for. All right, in that, Jason. So over here, that was not to be taken separately, but in that. All right. So Krishnan is asking a very interesting question, guys, and I'm sure some of you might be wondering about it. He's saying, isn't tissues a repetition? Isn't that redundancy? Now, Krishnan, repetition has been used. Repetition of a noun or a verb has been used often if it is required to clear an ambiguity. So that's okay, all right? So, Shavan, ideally, GMAT prefers the usage of such as for examples and like to draw a comparison, okay? Uh, Roshni, I hope that answers your question. Um, so, Gagan Shipper is saying, tissues acts as a noun plus noun modifier. Um, absolutely, you can... Uh, yes, Gagan, that is right. Okay, so uh, what difficulty? Uh, Martin, today we are going to look at only 700 plus level questions. All right. All the questions that we're going to look at will be 700 plus level questions. So, guys, that was the first takeaway that ED verbal modifies the nearest noun or the nearest noun phrase. If there is any ambiguity, you need to clear that up. Okay. Let's now quickly move to the next question. Here it is. This is our in-house question. It's a GMAT quiz. It's part of the question bank at GMAT quiz. And always, guys, I'm going to mute myself. Once again, don't put in the answers. I'm going to tell you when to put them in. All right? So go ahead. Uh, I'll just mute myself in the meantime. All right?
um guys please don't put in your answers now all right please hold on to your answers i'll tell you when to put the answers okay uh joavis uh, perhaps your net connection is a little weak which is why the screen is blurry so you could try rejoining if that is possible just hold on to your answers uh please Okay, you can now put in your answers. Uh, that's okay, Santiago. Don't worry. I can see some of the answers are already there. But uh, so, uh, Santiago, Kanishka, Jason, they believe it should be C. Um, and I'll wait for the other answers before I begin with the discussion. Okay, so I've got some more answers here. Saranj, Jason, Dipanshu, Devang, they have also chosen for C. Rajesh, uh, see how about the others. Let me quickly wait for another couple of seconds. Okay, I've also got a B out there, but it's mostly C is what I can see. Now let's see whether it is C or not. Okay, I also have a, another D. All right, so great guys. Let me see, I can get some more answers are coming in. Okay, Martin says E, Roshni says C, Webb says T, Ruchita, D. Okay, so there is a, a kind of, so we have B, E, C, D, all contenders where the major contender seems to be C. Now let's see for ourselves. Guys, so just hold on to your questions as you did earlier. It was such a nice, uh, such nice supportive audience. And I'm going to give you a chance to ask your questions. Hopefully, I'll be able to clear all your doubts. So here it goes. And once again, I want you guys to follow the approach, which is the, the cornerstone of our, uh, you know, you can say the course. OK, based on toxicity and exposure risks. So something is based on toxicity and exposure risks. And I know that here, this is not a verb. This is an ED verbal. So, because I also know that uh, uh, an ED verbal can modify only the nearest noun, I know that whatever is going to come after this phrase must be the noun that is being modified by this based. So, something is based on toxicity and exposure risk. All right, let me move forward. Pesticides, toxic substances, and contaminants. All right, so I have a group of these three nouns. All right. These three nouns based on toxicity. Now, wait a minute. This makes no sense. How can the pesticide be based on toxicity? I mean, this is weird. Is the pesticide based on toxicity? And then we are saying based on toxicity, toxic substances. And then we are saying based on toxicity, contaminants. And that this doesn't make sense. Clearly, the based on is not making sense. What we call, you know, the modifier and the modified entity, the MEM pair, as we call it at GMAT Fizz, don't agree logically. You know, they do not agree logically right away. Let's see. So these, I'm going, just going to keep that based on toxicity uh, aside for the moment, and I'm going to read on. Pesticides, etc., were, so subject verb agree, either banned or restricted by the EPA. So these substances were either banned or restricted. So banned and restricted are two verbs. And were banned, were restricted, fine. Banned or restricted by the EPA. OK, so far, so good. Which led. Now, this which is placed next to the, the noun EPA, which, which is a short form for some organization, probably. So the EPA led to a significant decrease in air and water pollution levels in the city. Now, this is a little weird. The EPA did not lead to a decrease. It is the action of banning or restriction, these two, which led to a significant decrease in the air and water pollution. So indirectly, which is referring to a verb? Or here, in this case, it is referring to verbs, which is incorrect. OK, I hope you guys can see this, that which is referring to the verbs banned and restricted. Banned and restricted led to a, the banning and the restricting left to, a, left to a significant decrease in air and water pollution. All right, so that's the error. So there are two errors 
very clearly uh, um, this uh, which the relative pronoun clause is referring to a verb which is not allowed which cannot modify a verb so that's your takeaway here uh, which cannot modify a verb of course this was not the main intention of the sentence now we still have to account for this based on toxicity okay so what the sentence really wants to say is that these toxic substances etc were probably banned or restricted uh, because of the fact that they were toxic and they were risks all right so clearly we are trying to use this to modify the verb were banned or restricted so pesticides toxic substances and contaminants were banned or restricted all right probably on the basis of toxicity and exposure risks so based is totally incorrect here the intended meaning is these substances were either banned or restricted by the epa and the banning led to a significant decrease in air and water pollution levels in the city they were banned on the basis of toxicity and exposure risks you can see therefore that this uh, this on the basis of toxicity and exposure risk okay on the basis is actually a prepositional phrase and this can modify the verb were banned all right it cannot um, here the the relationship is very clear all right so that was the error here in the original sentence two errors right away um, the ed verbal uh, not making sense with the modified entity. So modified entity and modifier do not agree logically. As we know, the ed verbal cannot modify a verb and therefore it is incorrect here. Okay, so the major takeaway here is ed verbal cannot modify a verb. Cannot modify a verb, okay? And ed verbal will always modify the noun next to which it is placed. So A is out because of this error here and because of the error about which. All right, let's move forward. B, some of you did choose this, so let's see whether it's correct. The error still remains about based. This based is modifying the nearest known pesticides, but that makes no sense. The pesticides are not based on toxicity. Okay, uh, so this is definitely still incorrect. and. Here we have ing verbal modifying EPA, which again implies that the EPA uh, is leading to uh, a significant, significant decrease in air and water pollution, which is not the idea. So B is still out. Let's move to C. On the basis of toxicity and exposure risk. Now here I have a prepositional phrase, okay? And a prepositional phrase can modify the verb from far away. So on the basis of toxicity and exposure risks, something were banned or restricted. All right, so far it makes sense by the EPA. And then we have a comma. So you have the comma plus ING here, okay? All right, plus the ING, which means it is modifying the nearest verbs restricted and banned. So this banned or restricted, led to a significant decrease in air and water pollution and therefore so far c looks good on all counts i'm actually going to go ahead and put it correct but i'm still going to eliminate the other choices which is the right approach to take so kudos to a lot of you uh, i'm going to ask you a very important question guys here um i'm going to ask you once i finish discussion discussing this over here we have on the basis of toxicity and exposure risk which is the correction it is right fully modifying were banned or restricted fair enough by the epa and so i have a connector here okay i've got a connector here which means this this is a verb here led and i want to ask what led to a decrease clearly the subject will be pesticides toxic substances and contaminants were banned or restricted and pesticides toxic substances led to a decrease now this is illogical it is not the pesticides that led to a decrease in air and water pollution okay and therefore d is also a few of you chose d which is incorrect here we again have based on toxicity which is incorrect um, 
your pesticides toxic substances contaminants which were either banned or restricted is fine um led to which means this is the subject and this is the verb because this part is basically a modifier now so subject says pesticides and contaminants led to a decrease in air and water pollution so e is also incorrect the subject and the verb do not make sense together all right so uh, the good part is a lot of you got this question correct a lot of you all right so kanishka is asking does base modify all three items yes kanishka that that is a my compound substance uh, sorry compound subject this is joined by and three nouns all right now i want to ask a very important question to all of you guys okay were you able to identify the fact that ed verbal modifies the nearest noun and that is why you rejected um the the original choice did the discussion on the previous question really help you that's my question did the dis discussion on the previous question that is the first question help you recognize the error in this question did it yes guys the first question we spoke about how the ed verbal should be placed next to the noun it modifies did that help you in identifying the error in this question so let me wait for a few seconds okay saranj and rajesh say that it did that's good to know saranj and rajesh um so mihir says c was clear and meaning yes mihir it would be right uh because all the uh, uh, you know the uh, elements were correctly used um pesticides the full bona fide verb of the main subject is okay so the main you're asking the bona fide verb of the main subject is both now were either banned or restricted so the the helping verb is were and banned and restricted are the two possible verb, uh, the two verbs okay so with that i'm just going to move to the next question but the takeaway here was once again when we talk about the ed verbals the two mistakes that we make is one we forget to notice that ed verbal uh, is placed next to a noun and can only modify that noun and sometimes we make the mistake of uh, accepting an ed verbal modifying a verb so those are the two most common errors related to the ed verbal and that solves our ed verbal dilemma i hope that helped you guys about the uh, giving you more clarity about how to look at ed verbals and notice the errors related to them um so rajesh uh, ing verbals can modify the action we'll talk about that i'm coming to the ing verbal so is that clear guys yes is this clear in our course at gmat wills we dedicate a complete video lesson to the handling of ed verbals how to recognize them how to recognize that they are being used correctly and how to make sure that you don't make that error you know don't mistake it for a uh, um uh, the correct verb okay guys i'm just going to move on to uh, so ruchita she likes uh, the question she found it helpful i think thank you ruchita i'm going to move on to the next part and that is the ing verbal confusion so we just solved the ed verbal dilemma now we're going to talk about the ing verbal confusion okay so hold on to your horses guys a lot of you have issues with this here's the question go ahead all the best uh I'll just quickly answer the question by sc were banned or restricted is verb for which relative clause were banned and restricted are the verbs for the subjects pesticides uh and toxic substances and contaminants okay all of them all the three
so gagan uh, leading not separated by a comma from the noun means it is modifying the noun okay and that was not correct in the given question Okay, guys, you can put in your answers. You can start putting in your answers. And thank you for holding back with your answers. So I hope, Gagan, you are, uh, you are clear with the uh, issue of the leading. Let's see your answers, and then we can begin with the discussion. So nice to see all of you all diligently working away at the question. All right, I've got the answers here. So let me just quickly run down the answers. I've got Devang with C, then I've got Saranj with D, A. So C, D, A, D, Mohan says D, Jason, D, Shawan, D, Krishnan, C. So it looks like C and D mostly, and with a few A and E's as well. So C, D, A, E, I mean, it's almost all ex with the exception of B. All right. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to delve into the discussion. What I can see, it's mostly Ds, that's the majority. And then the next uh, favorite is, I think, C, with A and E being just a, like, you know, only a few of you have chosen that. All right, so it's mostly between C and D. Let's see. Okay, guys, hold on to your um, questions and let me delve into the confusion of ing bubbles okay here goes our reading style and i hope you guys are noticing how we break sentences and read so at gmat Wiz, we also teach you where exactly to break and how to contextualize and how to relate back to the uh, the you know the rest of the sentence so that you get a you know comprehensive meaning even if the sentence is very complicated i mean for example look at this this is a long sentence okay so how to make sure that you break this and read this in one go and you don't waste time and you're able to get the intended meaning so that it helps you eliminate the answer choices smoothly. And that is why we use this method. Okay. So there's a totally dedicated section on this, uh, understanding the intended meaning and how to go about doing it. It's a skill, believe me, guys, that's going to really help you in CR and SE questions as well. Uh, CR and RC questions as well. Sorry. Okay, here we go. So the other thing that I wanted to just say is lots of times uh, I've seen students not really focusing much on the ununderlined portion. I would say don't commit that mistake ever. Okay. All right. Chinese public buildings. So we're talking about certain buildings erected. Okay. So I'm going to stop here a moment and ask myself, is it a verb here? No. Is it erected a verb? Did the buildings erected anything? No, 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 no. So buildings were erected. Okay. So erected here is an ED verbal clearly. And I've just now done the lesson on ED verbals. I remember that it is modifying the building. Okay. So these buildings are erected under a construction code of a certain dynasty. All right. Have withstood earthquakes well. 
So my subject is buildings and my verb is have withstood all right. They make sense, subject verb agree. So these buildings have been able to withstand earthquakes. Okay. Because clearly here now I'm going to be given the reason behind the verb why these buildings have withstood earthquakes well. The white cedar. Now, if you know that cedar is a wood, good. But even if you don't, just understand that it's something. Okay, it's some material maybe. Because the white cedar used. Now, is used here a verb? Did the cedar used something? No. So here I have another ed verbal. Okay. And this is modifying cedar. So the white cedar used. This is an ed verbal here. Has. So the white cedar has. Subject verb. Okay. Agrees. Four times. Okay. Four times the tensile strength of steel. All right. So this white cedar, whatever it is, it is four times as strong as steel and steel has a tensile strength. So there seems to be nothing wrong here. So far as I can see, let me read forward. And OK, so something else is going to be stated. So because of this, and then you have an and, perhaps another reason is going to be stated why these uh, buildings have withstood earthquakes well. I've already been given one reason, and that is the white cedar is very strong. Okay. And the timber frame. Okay. So one component was a uh, white cedar, so subject one. And here, therefore, I have subject two. So because the white cedar something and the timber frame something. All right. What about the timber frame? Let's see. There's a comma here, and then I've got an ing verbal. It's an ing verbal because there is no helping verb. Now the question arises, what is it modifying? Since there is no clause preceding this comma plus ing, right? There is a comma, there is an ing, but there is no clause. See, there is just this noun timber frame. The clause is a previous clause. That is, you know, that is the one before and. So the, the incorporating cannot jump and refer to a previous clause's verb. All right. So here we can see this incorporating must refer to timber frame. In fact, incorporating many joints and few nails, okay, this is within commas. You know, you normally place non-essential information within commas, guys, okay? And you should be able to make sense of your sentence uh, by eliminating this. So what we really mean here is the timber frame is flexible that's the verb for timber frame so subject one uh, so here we have subject one and verb one let's put it this way then we have subject two and verb two and then we have subject three and verb three here and all of that makes sense what we're essentially saying here is the chinese buildings uh, have withstood earthquakes well okay so the main point is the buildings have let me just remove this from here, guys. Okay. Have withstood earthquakes well. The reasons are the white cedar used is strong and the timber frame is flexible. Okay. And then I have additional information that the timber frame has many joints and it has very few nails. All right. So as far as I can see, A has no errors. All right, A has no errors. Incorporating here, once again, I'll repeat, cannot modify a verb because there is no verb before it. There's just this noun, okay? This is an independent clause, if you see, all right? The white cedar till steel is another independent clause, all right? So therefore, the ing verbal cannot modify the verb of another independent clause. I hope that's absolutely clear. So A as it looks is good as is, all right? So the lesson we've learned here very clearly is that the ing verbal, okay, comma plus ing verbal will modify a verb, but if there is no verb, it will modify a noun. If no verb, then the nearest noun, okay? So you've got to be very, very clear here. Let's see. So A as is is correct for the time being. 
and I'm going to quickly move to B. Used in them. Now, used in them. So the white cedar used in them will have to refer to buildings logically. Okay, I'm still okay with that. All right. So the white cedar used in them, this used in them would then become my ED verbal phrase. Has four times the tensile strength of steel has. This is redundant. This is absolutely redundant. I mean, would you say um, I have uh, four times the money Jason has? No, you would simply say I have four times the money Jason, uh, the, the money that they, Jason has. In this case, Jason has will come. I'm so sorry. Let's take another sentence where I would not need to remove, repeat the verb. I mean, uh, what we are saying is the white cedar has four times the tensile strength of steel. That is off here. So already I'm saying the st strength that steel has. So I don't need this has because I already have this off here. All right. So this has is redundant, definitely out. Incorporating here is still modifying timber frames. That's okay. But I am, so one, I'm wondering why this them is given here. There was really no need. The other major error is that we are repeating the verb has. All right. It is redundant because we're already saying strength of steel. So we, we are saying that the, uh, the strength that the steel has because of this usage of of. So B is incorrect. Let's move to C. That was used in them. Now, we're keeping on making the sentence longer, which by itself is not very desirable unless and until there is some kind of ambiguity that you have to clear up. So that here will refer to white setter. So that was used in them is a relative pronoun clause for white setter. Okay. Has four times the tensile strength steel has. Okay. So the white setter has four times the tensile strength steel has. Um, is still okay and the timber frame incorporating now the problem here is this was used first of all the relative pronoun clause really no need and second is was used here implies it is no longer present okay but since the buildings are still standing the white cedar would also be there. Therefore, using was used is actually incorrect. All right. We should not use the past, uh, simple past here. Okay. So this sentence C is also not correct, guys. That was used. Again, we have the error that was used. Has four times as much tensile strength as steel. All right four times as much tensile strength as steel, all right. And the timber frame incorporates. Now here, the ing verbal has been moved into a verb. Now see the funny thing here. The timber frame becomes a subject, incorporates is the verb, incorporates many joints and few nails. And after that, you just have a comma. And then again, you have another verb. Now, is this a logical construction? Timber frame incorporates is flexible. No, I would have needed a connector here, right? Between these two verbs. And therefore, D is incorrect. A lot of you chose C and D. I hope you can see where you made the error, guys. E, that was used, same problem, was used. Has four times the tensile strength. Steel does is incorrect, okay? We are talking about the possession, has. So if even if you had to re re uh, repeat, you could have repeated has, which we did in the previous choice. And the same problem here incorporates and then you would have is flexible. So E is incorrect again, because here incorporates would be followed by is and no connector here again. And so, there. all right, guys. So let's see if you have any questions, guys. Um, all right, so Jason's asking, how do I find that the time uh, timber frame being talked in option A is the one used in the building? Jason, always the analysis has to be in the context of the sentence. We are talking about buildings, okay? And we are talking about why they have withstood the earthquake well, okay? And then the first, the first clause uh, about the cedar, the white cedar used. So when we say the white cedar used and 
it makes sense to believe that the timber frame is also about the building. You are not, you aren't going to talk about the timber frame of a photograph, are you, Jason? Okay. So the takeaway here is um, that the ing verbal after a comma modifies the nearest verb, yes, but that isn't to be followed like blindly. See whether there is a verb there or not. If there isn't, that comma plus ing could mean that it is modifying the noun. It's a very common trick that you might play sometimes. So, uh, Devang, yes, comma plus ing is actually modifying a clause if you really look at it. But we say that it is giving the uh, details about the nearest verb, which is basically the part of the clause. All right, Devang? So in a way, when you say comma plus ing is modifying the nearest verb, you mean to say that comma plus ing is modifying the preceding clause. So Rajesh is asking, it has been long constructed uh, using, it has been constructed long back using white setter. So see Rajesh, you're using the present perfect has been constructed, which means the white setter, the timber frame is still there. Okay. So that is why we don't use simple past. All right, Rajesh. The other thing is we do not use the simple past unless and until a time, particular time marker is given. GMAT does not accept that as correct. Again, that is a discussion beyond this session. Uh, we teach you that, that you cannot use a simple past tense unless and until a past time marker is given. Okay. Um, I hope that answers your question, Rajesh. Bhavish is saying two independent clauses joined by and rather than because. So, Bhavesh, uh, because is joining the first clause, okay, that is Chinese buildings um, uh, erected uh, have withstood. So, Chinese buildings have withstood because, then the reason, okay. All right, Bishwadeep, how is the comparison between white setter and tensile strength logical? Well, uh, Bishwadeep, is it wrong to say that the wood is as strong as steel? Nothing wrong with that. Also, if we really go into the meaning of it, tensility is the ability of a material to be stretched. Okay. The ability of a material to be stretched. So when you say tensile, um, you are basically saying it's hardy. So it's as hardy as the strength of a steel, tensile strength of a steel. Okay. So we'll not go into the words here. Cedar is a common noun and strength. Steel is the noun here. Okay. It has the strength, tensile strength. So tensile strength here is basically the noun. Tensile strength is the noun. Cedar is a noun. Okay. Strength is an abstract noun, but that's still okay. So Gagan uh, says he's not sure why C is incorrect. Gagan, I don't remember which uh, what was the C choice, but I'll quickly pop back to C. The past tense is incorrect, Gagan. Okay. We're talking about the Chinese buildings have withstood earthquakes well. Simple, the present perfect. So we're talking about cedar, which is still there. Why would you say was used? Simple past is used for things that are no longer present. Okay. So it is definitely incorrect here. All right. Um, I think that's about it. And I hope your questions are answered, guys. So let's quickly look at another question on IMG. Okay, go ahead, guys. All the best.
All right, guys, you can put in your answers. Um, Aditya says it's C. Let's see what some of you say, the others. We're going to quicken a little bit so that we cover all, you know, uh, as many that are possible to be covered. All right, the answer really looks to be between. So I've got uh, C, C, Devang says A, Shritik says C, B, A, Krishna says B, uh, B, A, A, D, Aditya says, okay, Aditya A, fine, Noor says A, Shawan says C. So A, B, C, all right, A, B, C, okay, no D and E so far. Now, this is one of those classic questions, guys, okay, I want you to pay very close attention. Um, all right, we are running short on time, so I'm going to kind of give you a very clear explanation. But if you are all paying attention, then uh, you won't need to ask any questions, and we'll be able to get in to solve more questions. Okay, so let's start reading. Scientists have recently discovered. Okay, so we're talking about present perfect here. The subject is scientists. They have discovered something. And what could be the largest and oldest living organism on Earth? So they've discovered something, and this could be the largest and oldest living organism on Earth. Fine. A giant fungus. So what have they discovered? A giant fungus. Okay. That is, so this that is a relative pronoun. It is modifying the giant fungus. This giant fungus is an interwoven filigree, filigree as in a network of mushrooms and root like tentacles okay so i can literally imagine there's a giant fungus and there's a network spreading full of mushrooms and tentacles okay spawned by now spawned here is it a verbal or a verb let me ask the question who spawned or what spawned again you might be asking what is this question okay this is one of the tips that we use to teach you how to identify a, a, an ed verbal uh, from a verb but that's again not the point of the discussion so here spawned is an ed verbal because nobody performed the action of spawned okay since you are saying spawned by i mean you can't say giant fungus spawned by so giant fungus did not do the spawn all right then what is ed verbal going to modify we know that ed verbal can modify either the nearest noun or the noun phrase so here what it looks like is it's kind of modifying this whole thing so the head noun is filigree and it is made up of mushrooms and root like tentacles all right so we can kind of understand that this entire network of mushrooms and tentacles they are spawned by that is produced by a single fertilized spore some 10,000 years ago. So filigree is being modified. So this, this entire noun phrase, guys, this entire noun phrase is being modified by spawned by. All right. So a giant fungus, that is an interwoven filigree. And this filigree is spawned by a single fertilized spore. All right. And so now that I know that there is an ed verbal here, this is a modifier here, okay? Going by my parallelism, I should expect another modifier after and. And extending. Now here is an ing verbal and I start wondering, okay, can an ing verbal, now I'm expecting a modifier here. So I'm asking myself, can an ing verbal and an ed verbal be parallel? Can we use an ed verbal and ing verbal for the same noun? Of course we can. Because we know that an ed verbal and an ing verbal both can modify the noun. All right. So what we are really saying here is that uh, scientists have recently discovered a giant fungus. Okay. And then we have, a, we have lots of modifiers here. This giant fungus is an interwoven network. And the network is generated or produced by something and the network uh, extending for more than so this is filigree spawned by this filigree extending so we have what we mean to say is the filigree spawned by okay and the filigree that is a network extending since it is still present so all in all if i really need to take out the meaning 
I have scientists have recently discovered what could be the largest and oldest living organism. So it makes sense, you know, largest means extending for more than 30 acres here. And uh, for, you know, spawned some 10,000 years ago is oldest. So makes sense. This organism is a giant fungus. It is an interwoven filigree of something, something. This filigree was spawned by a single fertilized spore and extend. Now, if you can see here, when I converted it into a verb, then I need to use extends. But if it was simply a modifier, then spawned by and extending is good enough. All right. So extending is correct. There's nothing wrong with it. What we are saying is um, you have, wait, let me just move it. Filigree of mushrooms and tentacles spawned by and extending for. Okay. Those are the two modifiers. Okay. Now you might ask what's wrong with using extends? What is wrong with using extends is extends could actually, extends is a verb actually, isn't it? It's a verb. So that would destroy parallelism, right? You would have one, uh, uh, you would have one modifier that is spawned by, spawned by and extends. So filigree spawned by and filigree extends. Spawned by being a modifier and extends being a verb doesn't work. So B is out. Same thing with extended. It would be the simple past tense, which in itself would make no sense simple past right i mean extended we know can be an ed verbal but the problem here is it could also function as a verb i mean think about it if you say filigree spawned by because of that by you know it's a ed modifier but when you say filigree extended clearly it seems as if filigree extended something okay all right, filigree extended for more than. Now, this looks like a verb. Very suspiciously, suspiciously, it looks like a verb. And therefore, extended won't work. You need, here in fact, the ing verbal has been used to make sure that you don't confuse extended for a verb. Okay, now if I say filigree extending, you will not confuse it with a verb, right? So, spawned by and extending for. Clearly, it's a ing modifier but it is a modifier so my list is parallel i have two modifiers joined by and okay let's move to d it extended would first of all this it suddenly after and before and i have a modifier and after and i'm placing a clause it extended definitely not done and extended would again be a verb so d would also be incorrect for the same reasons i explained earlier is extending is again a verb, although present, simple present progressive, but we don't need a verb because a verb would destroy the parallelism. Is that clear, guys? Quickly, your questions. Any questions? Good. I can see all of you kind of agree with me. Wonderful. I hope the session is really uh, turning out to be an eye opener for you guys. Is it? So the learning here was one, the ing verbal should modify uh, the nearest noun. If it's separated by a comma from a clause, it should modify the nearest verb. But if there is no nearest verb, then the ing verbal will modify a noun. The second thing is an ed verbal and an ing verbal can be parallel. Okay. So I hope that was really helpful so far. Um, so Kanishka is asking a very important question. How do we really understand that the modifier doesn't reach the giant fungus, but modifies only filigree? Now, one thing is that a modifier does not leap over a verb to modify something else. All right. So is is a verb after that. So the modifier is not going to jump over and above the is and modify something beyond that is. All right. A modifier can sometimes jump a small modifier, but it won't jump a verb. Uh, no, Kanishka, so you have to look at, if you break down the structure, that is a network. And then in between, you have another ed verbal, and then again, you're reverting to and. So that is not parallelism. The and will be only parallel to the part before it, the phrase before it. Okay. 
so the and one thing that i can tell you kanishka how to do how to understand is you break it in the right places you contextualize it you know you ask questions the way i have been asking questions the way i have been breaking the sentences that's the only way to uh, really make sure that you don't uh, confuse anything all right guys so i'm going to quickly move to the next flexible modifier mystery and i'm going to be really quick about this the flexible modifier or as it is popularly known noun plus noun modifier okay let's quickly understand they can modify both nouns and verbs but they can be placed far away from the entity they modify now if you look at these sentences hari has graduated from cambridge university with distinction in economics then you are saying an achievement that sets him apart from his contemporaries okay now what can be an achievement in the preceding clause it's the fact that he has graduated so an achievement that sets him apart an achievement is a noun here and then you have the clause this is the modifier for an achievement so you have a, a noun plus noun modifier here okay and here the flexible modifier is this noun plus noun modifier it is modifying the main verb has graduated and as you can see it is modifying it from far all right now clearly you would not confuse cambridge university with an achievement and you would not confuse economics uh, uh, only the word economics uh, uh, with an achievement okay it is the graduation with distinction which is an achievement okay okay then here is another sentence let me just clear this up guys for a moment so that you are not hindered by it okay Yeah, Harry has graduated from Cambridge University with distinction in economics, an institution. Now here clearly you won't refer to the verb as an institution or economics as an institution. You would refer to the college. So here the flexible modifier is modifying the noun Cambridge University. So it can modify the flexible modifier can modify a verb from far. It can modify a noun from far away. what sets apart the flexible modifier is the typical format what you have is a noun entity plus the modifier modifying this entity so here we had an achievement is the noun and then you have that sets him apart from his contemporaries is the noun modifier starting with that it could start with which as well similarly you have an institution which is a noun modified by the noun modifier starting with that or which so that's the typical format for flexible modifiers all right and we teach you in detail about the flexible modifiers on our platform okay so what you need to note here is that flexible modifiers are not connected to the sentence with the help of a connector like i can't put an and in between here if i put an and it would mean it's a totally different thing harry has graduated from cambridge university with distinction in economics and an institution that is considered now that doesn't that means this an institution is something totally different it is not referring back to cambridge university the other thing is it is always attached to the main clause with the help of a comma as you can see in both cases you have commas okay so those are the two points to be remembered about flexible modifiers here's a question guys and this is again our own in house gmat quiz question 700 plus level question go ahead guys so uh, saranch says i'm really struggling to apply these rules saranch it is all based on how well you're able to break your sentence and read them i want to talk about that a bit later on
all right guys um you can put in your answers now so aditya is confused between c and e how about the others you know sometimes a sentence looks very really long it all depends on how you break it down and read it and you know that makes the whole process simpler for you okay so um aditya has finally gone with c Vishwadeep, so so far I have all C, Vishwadeep C, Roshni C, Sunil C, Rajesh C, Krishnan has gone for E though. Okay. All right, guys. So it's really between C and E as I can see it. Let me quickly move to the discussion. The researchers compared something, all right. Unnecessary medical service claims for a certain number of patients. So they compared these unnecessary medical service claims for certain patients. And these were patients who were on traditional plans. So basically, I have they compared X, okay, and then we have a modifier for X with claims filed for another certain number of patients who switched. All right. So we have two categories of patients, okay? We have claims of certain patients who were on traditional plans, and we have claims for patients who switched from the traditional plan and switched from, and then it should be to. You always switch from something to something else. So switch from a traditional plan and a consumer-directed health plan doesn't make sense. So here, these two relative pronoun clauses are really uh, modifiers. What the paragraph about the sentence is so far essentially saying is researchers compared uh, X with Y. Okay. A study accounted for. Now, suddenly, after this clause, after this clause from here to here, we have uh, another clause. A study accounted. So, accounted here is a verb, subject, study. And then it means you have two independent clauses separated by a comma. The construction is totally incorrect. Okay. This second clause must have some bearing on the previous clause. Let's see what it says. A study accounted for patient characteristics, including X, Y, Z. So clearly this study can only be referring to what these researchers compared. Now the researchers probably studied or compared. So clearly here there has to be a you know a study that accounted for would make sense to refer back to what the uh, the verb is saying compared a study that accounted for patient characteristics is modifying compared here that's the only thing which implies a study being done so researchers compared unnecessary medical service claims of a certain number of patients following traditional plans with the claims of people who changed from a traditional plan to another plan, all right? And this study that compared such claims took into consideration different patient characteristics, which included age, race, sex, income, and health conditions. All right, so that's about straight away. A is incorrect for the reasons just discussed. It should be a study that accounted, and we should have a from and to, okay? B, um, so we have a from and to here, but then we still have a study that is missing here. So B is also out. Who we'll switch from a traditional plan to a consumer directed health plan and a study that accounted for okay, C looks good. C so far I don't have any reason to eliminate C actually. Let me look at D. Who we'll switched from a traditional plan to a consumer health director, a consumer directed health plan and a study now as i said earlier a flexible modifier is not joined by and it makes no sense then we are saying researchers compared something and a study so the researchers compared this and a study did they compare a study and a study accounted for so this doesn't make sense you have a subject verb pair here and it is connected to the main sentence with the help of a connector no sense at all E, who switched from a traditional plan to a consumer-directed health plan, which accounted for? Now, here the which is modifying the nearest noun, consumer-directed health plan. This is not per the intended meaning, guys. The intended meaning is 
that it is a study that you know uh, accounted for patient characteristics and here you are saying the health plan the consumer directed health plan accounted for patient characteristics so clearly e is not the correct answer this is a very 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 important learning guys this choice is not so earlier one of you were saying that you were very hard put to remove e that is because e was nothing was wrong with e in terms of grammar but it is not per intended meaning and my intended meaning has to be measured against the original sentence that's the benchmark all right so is that clear guys why e is not the answer a lot of you marked e uh, i hope you guys can see why e is not the answer e is grammatically correct nothing wrong there but it is not per the intended meaning in the intended meaning it was the comparison made by the researchers which was taking into account the age etc of the patients okay it was not the consumer directed health plan so the learning again uh, here from this is flexible modifiers have a particular uh, format and one should follow that format to make sure that it is the correct modifier now i'm going to quickly now go into the last leg the that which conundrum such a common error okay we often believe uh, that we often don't know what this that or which is uh, referring to all right here's a question for you guys go ahead all right and then i'm going to discuss this uh, i have a question from roshni i'm not crystal clear for i did not understand why that is necessary so roshni that is actually connecting a study to the first part of the clause which study the study that accounted for okay so which study are we referring to because the previous clause doesn't really mention study by the word study so the researchers compared something and this comparison is a study that's what we are saying and that is why we need that that to relate that uh, flexible modifier to the previous clause all right so go ahead with this question guys let's quickly round this off and i hope you guys are really uh, deriving certain learnings All right, guys, you can put in your answers. So Vinayak says it's B. Aditya says it's B. How about the others? Sunil says it's B. Okay. What about the others? Let's quickly wait for some more answers, and then I can kind of get started on the discussion. Uh, Roshni, you're welcome. Uh, good to see that it clarified. So so far, I've got Bs. Uh, and no other answer choices have been opted for. All right, it it looks like B is going to be a winner out and out. Okay, 
great so shritik b um uh, vishwadeep b all right good well 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 so let's quickly go through this question here to understand why it is b if it is b about 5 million acres in the united states have been invaded so here the subject is 5 million acres and they have been invaded okay sorry the verb subject verb agrees by leafy spurge now so the the thing that has invaded these acres is the leafy spurge and then you have a noun phrase here or herbaceous plant so this leafy spurge is a herbaceous plant from eurasia with milky sap now with milky sap is a prepositional phrase and it's a little weird it it, it could modify eurasia and it could definitely uh, modify plant i mean so there is nothing wrong with two prepositional phrases modifying the same noun one after the other um so because it is logically clear that the plant is from eurasia and the plant has milky sap all right that gives mouth source to cattle now that is referring to the milky sap here that's the nearest noun so this milky sap gives mouth source to cattle all right displacing grasses and other cattle food now we've got a comma here and we've got an ing so the comma plus sorry guys one second uh, my bad the comma plus ing has to be modifying the nearest verb what is the nearest verb gives mouth source to cattle and what gives mouth source to cattle milky sap now this is a little weird the milky sap that gives mouth source to cattle displacing grasses so what we are really saying is by giving mouth source to cattle it displaces grass now how does that happen if a cattle gets mouth sources how is the grass displaced so clearly this ing modifier is not working with this verb it could very well be that the milky sap gives mouth source to cattle but what makes sense is the leafy spurge would displace the grasses and the other cattle food that that's how it would invade the acres right it would displace the grass on the acres that leafy spurge that's what i'm guessing let's see displacing grasses and other cattle food and rendering rangeland worthless so this comma plus these we have two modifiers here but both would both are connected by and so they both would be modifying uh, gives and that doesn't make sense the mouth the milky sap gives mouth source to cattle displacing grass so in a way the milky sap is displacing grass by giving mouth source to cattle and the milky sap is rendering the rangeland worthless by giving mouth source to cattle totally totally illogical what could be logically understood is these 5 million acres have been invaded by the leafy spurge this leafy spurge is a herbaceous plant from eurasia the plant has milky sap that gives mouth source to cattle fine the plant displaces grasses and other cattle food okay uh, so when i say the plant i mean the leafy spurge displaces grasses and other cattle food and this displacement leaves the rangeland worthless that's what i mean so you can see here that uh, you know this that connects to milky sap it will refer to its nearest noun so when we talk about that and which they can modify the nearest noun they can modify a slightly far away noun you know a noun which is separated by a prepositional phrase but in that case that would be modifying eurasia which would be equally illogical all right so here that cannot really uh, it, it doesn't make sense to say that milky sap that gives mouth source and milky sap displaces grasses okay let's move to so choice a is totally out let's move to b say uh, so have been invaded by the leafy spurge so far so good a herbaceous plant from eurasia now see this is not non essential information within commas so with milky sap can actually be removed and read okay so you can continue by reading a herbaceous plant from eurasia with milky sap so milky sap is within commas non essential information non essential information a herbaceous plant from eurasia is again within commas you can also say this is non -inf non essential information so what you really have is about 5 million acres in the united states have been invaded by the leafy spurge that gives mouth source to cattle so that that can modify a far away noun that's the learning from here 
provided you have non essential information in between okay that gives mouth sores to cattle and it displaces so leafy spurge that gives mouth sores to cattle this is the subject and this is the relative pronoun clause with verb 1 and verb 2 and the rendering will modify these two verbs displaces and gives mouth sores to cattle so what b is really saying is that about the 5 million acres in the united states have been invaded by leafy spurge this leafy spurge gives mouth sores to cattle this leafy spurge displaces grasses and by displacing the grasses it renders the rangeland worthless okay so b looks good so far absolutely all right have anybody marked any other choices okay some of you have gone for um e as well so i hope jason you understand why e cannot be the answer i hope i'm still going to discuss c uh, but b is correct actually um all right good aditya that was good all right let's quickly continue with this c says have been invaded by leafy spurge a herbaceous plant from eurasia now it says eurasia see the ing modifier is placed next to this noun without any comma so it means the eurasia is having milky sap and again we have the same error milky sap that gives mouth source to cattle and displacing so there is a parallelism error as well after that you have a verb but and displacing is a modifier so nothing actually makes sense in c all right eurasia is not having the milky sap number one and the original error that was there in a that milky sap gives mouth source to cattle displacing grasses it's, it's not even modifying that because the and is coming in between so this is a parallelism error as well here okay guys so c is incorrect d uh, I don't have a verb for 5 million acres because the have has been converted into having. No verb, no SV pair. One of the golden rules framework that we teach is there must be a subject verb pair for a sentence to be correct. Here again, we have the same error with milky sap that gives mouth source to cattle. And then you have displaces another verb. So clearly with milky sap that gives mouth source to cattle, displaces grasses. You don't even have a connector and the milky sap does not displace grasses and does not render so all of this is coming to milky sap which is incorrect e no verb again no verb no sv pair here okay and then again eurasia that has milky sap now this is even more weird and the sap giving mouth source to cattle all right see all the modifiers illogically kind of so milky sap giving mouth source is still okay but it means milky sap giving mouth source to cattle milky sap displacing grasses milky sap rendering the rangeland worthless totally out is e all right guys so i hope that's clear and that brings us to the end of the session there was another question but uh, in the kind of uh, we don't have the luxury of time so we'll quickly look at the takeaways guys this question will be added to the recording if possible okay so don't worry about it for the moment this was also about the usage of that and which now these are the takeaways which are very important and, and you can kind of take a, a screenshot of this and remember the ed verbal dilemma the ed verbal modifies the nearest noun or noun phrase cannot modify a verb ing verbal if it is separated by a comma from a clause it will modify the verb in that clause if no clause preceding the comma, it will modify the nearest noun. An ed verbal and ing verbal can be parallel. Flexible modifier is not connected to the sentence with the help of a connector. It is attached to the sentence with a comma and it follows the specific format. The that in which conundrum is that can modify a slightly far away entity which is separated by a prepositional phrase, but it cannot modify a verb. A that and which cannot modify a verb. So these were the takeaways, guys, uh, today. Of today's session these are the most seven seven most commonly uh, committed errors on modifiers and these need to be noticed and avoided now guys uh, this is the information at which you can get in touch with us all right i'm going to come up with this again in a moment but before that a very important announcement we're going to start an offer from tomorrow which will be valid till 2nd november this is a special offer for our online prep course um 
if you want uh, uh, to check out our uh, course, there's a free trial. Uh, we can we'll share a link of that free trial with you. You can uh, you can kind of go through that uh, free trial uh, straight away, uh, so that once the offer is on, you can decide to take up the offer if you want. If you like the course, it is one of the best courses available around that I can vouch for. And once you go through the free trial version, you'll be able to judge for yourselves, guys. All right. Um, in case you want to talk with our expert Piyush, all right, on any matters of strategy or anything else that's troubling you uh, related to um, uh, GMAT preparation, Piyush, who, who himself is a 740 uh, scorer, will help you out. We are sharing with you a link uh, through which you can directly contact him for any uh, advice on strategy and other matters related to GMAT, all right? So we're going to share two links with you. One is for the free trial uh, of the course, free trial version of the course, and the other will be a link uh, to get in touch with Piyush for any strategic discussions. Um, apart from that, guys, um, uh, the the link for this offer you will get once you visit our website. So you don't have to do anything separately for that. But the offer uh, uh, ends uh, on the 2nd November and starts tomorrow. You can, in the meantime, visit the um, free trial version. Okay. So uh, I think the link has been shared with you. The link to schedule a free consultation with Piyush okay, at Calendly.com and uh, the link for the free trial version. So definitely try out, guys. A lot of things that I have kind of discussed in brief in today's session, because there wasn't enough time to discuss it at length, have been dealt with uh, in detail in our course, OK? Each and everything, how to break a sentence, how to read it, how to identify the intended meaning, uh, how to identify the verb, uh, how to identify the subject verb pairs, and so on and so forth. One of the unique things that we teach is the Golden Rules Framework, literally a checklist, a mental checklist of what are the errors you should look out for? You know, often we forget what are the errors that we should look out for. So that's about it, guys. Any questions you have, I'll be free to answer them. Uh, you're welcome, Rajesh. I hope the session was really, really um, helpful to you. So thank you for uh, attending the session, guys. Uh, I really hope you will take back some very important learnings related to modifiers, modifiers being one of the most important areas. So guys, I hope uh, uh, you do take a peek at that trial, trial version, all right? And if you're really serious about your uh, preparation, you can give it a shot. Um, you're welcome, Devang. Uh, you're most welcome. Welcome, Krishnan. So. So guys, uh, I hope you guys have got that link, uh, both those links. You can kind of uh, take it away for your references. And uh, if there are no questions, I'm going to sign out for the day. Thank you very much for being such a good and helpful audience. Okay, are there and I don't see any more questions there right now. All right. Did, did you guys get the link? Okay, I can see the link there. Yeah. Good enough. So yeah, I've shared the link, ma'am. And uh, like if you have any if you have any other questions that you want to speak with us, uh, you can always schedule the call with us later on. And ma'am, if you can go to the previous slide, I guess we have our contact details as well. Yeah, I'll just so do if that. Anyone yeah, yeah. wants to right. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a moment. Okay. Okay. This was a very, uh, like, uh, we had to condense so many different uh, topics in this webinar of two hours. And uh, um, really good job, definitely. I can see on the comments as well that people have actually loved the webinar. Yeah, so it was, yeah, it was really, really thank helpful. Thank you very much, Jason, uh, Dimple, Ruchika, Ruchita, Krishnan. So that was fun for me also. I mean, you know, really good to see different responses and different queries gets gives us a deep insight into what students want. And that's what really our course is about, making sure that the entire course is simplified uh, so that you're able to apply the concepts. Some of you were saying earlier on that you find it really hard to apply these you know, uh, concepts all at a time. So we provide you with that kind of framework 
so that you can remember that these are the things that you have to check out for. In fact, I was thinking that uh, we can actually share some of the other session recordings as well. So if, in case Ma'am ma has taken a lot of sessions, he has actually covered uh, almost like uh, all aspects of sentence correction, critical reasoning and reading comprehension. So in case you want to uh, view some of the previous recordings, you can use this link. It contains almost 20 different webinars, uh, including quant as well as verbal. Uh, so please feel free to go through these recordings at your own pace and uh, uh, do subscribe to the GMATVIS YouTube channel where these recordings are shared so that you can actually get notification whenever a new session recording is also shared. So feel free to do that. And uh, we'll be coming back again uh, soon with another topic uh, to help you guys prepare. Well, it was really, really great to interact with all of you today. So, yep. okay. So I'm going to end the broadcast. So I don't see any okay. other questions. Thank so, you, guys. Okay. Good night. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you, Piyush.